Greetings and salutations, YouTube dudes, YouTube dudettes. Today's lesson, The Hero's Calling. Hey guys, welcome to the second video of The Hero's Journey. My name is Greg Gro, and today we'll talk about an important concept called the hero's call or the call to adventure. If you want to find more about my channel, click here for my first video. Never thought I'd see a flying video before. Creepy! So basically in any adventure story, the main hero has to receive a call to adventure, a hero's call. Something has to come and invite them to explore a different world they haven't experienced before. Think of the movie Lord of the Rings. The call to adventure was the ring presented to Frodo. Or, if you're a fan of fantasy like I am, the call to adventure for Aragon was the dragon egg, and the call to adventure for Harry Potter was the letter to go to Hogwarts. So all in all, this hero's call is an invitation for the hero to go from their comfortable existence to a different world, to a place they haven't been before. How this hero's calling applies to their own lives is that every day you're given an opportunity to step outside your comfort zone and pursue something that you care for. So to spell it out, basically answering your hero's call in your own life is basically when an opportunity arises for you to step outside your comfort zone and to do something that aligns deeply with what you believe in. And by nature, a hero's calling is uncomfortable. You're stepping outside your comfort zone. It has to be scary. It has to be something you feel that you cannot do. Otherwise, it won't be a hero's calling. It will be just something you do day to day every day. The possibility of failure has to be there. That in a nutshell is answering your hero's calling. To make this idea more concrete for you, I'll share a story with you about a historical figure which I believe was a true hero, and also tell you the moment where he answered his hero's calling. I designed this narrative so you actually feel some type of way after the story is over, so you actually experience what it means to answer your hero's call. You can actually experience this because like I said in my first video, the hero's journey is a living model ingrained in the human psyche which everyone in their lives has experienced at some point. And I designed this video so you can start noticing these distinctions in your own life. So, without further ado, here goes. This beautiful man's face is Thomas Fowell Buxton. He was born in the late 18th century and he was a key person in getting the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 passed in Great Britain. Before he got that act passed, however, slavery was still ongoing in Great Britain. It was generally accepted that slavery was bad, but like any political issue, there's many shades of grey. Some argue that the slave trade was critical to the Great Britain economy. Some argue that if Great Britain didn't do it, the world would still trade slaves. But one of the main issues was that some people were convinced that slaves were actually treated badly. It's synonymous to what is happening in today's first world countries, where we hear stories about people in third world countries suffering from disease, poverty, and famine. We aren't moved to help them because we don't directly see the suffering that these people go through, so it's much easier to ignore them. That was what was happening in Great Britain, but in this case, with slavery. Thomas Buxton, he was part of the parliament, and the parliament, if you don't know, is basically the ruling body, the government system within Great Britain, and they were responsible for making all the major decisions in Great Britain. Thomas Buxton wanted slavery wet clean for Great Britain. That was his vision, that was what he deeply wanted. And what he did was that he spent 12 long years, 12 long years setting up missionaries to show people in the parliament and in Great Britain just how terrible slavery was. To show them the hard facts and the truth that slavery was terrible and in reality it was inherently an unjust system. After 12 years in doing this, guess what the parliament did? Nothing! They did nothing! The topic of abolition wasn't even put on the parliament floor. The parliament floor is where all the major issues and laws are put up for debate and discussion. So imagine that. Put yourself in Buxton's shoes. You spend 12 years working day in and day out to prove to your country that slavery is bad and should be abolished. Yet, no one makes a move and the issue of slavery keeps getting ignored and waived by the very people you work with every day. Honestly, I would probably feel really down and hopeless and angry about this situation and would want to quit after 12 years of working and seeing nothing happen. So, if you were in his shoes, what would you have done? It's very tempting to give up and let your dream die after working for 12 years and seeing no result. It's even more tempting to keep doing what you're doing, because it was honest work, but realize deep down that your dream can never be realized. But what Buxton did was remarkable because he chose the only choice that could have got the act of 1833 through. The only one and it was very brave and commendable what he did 
I believe that he knew in deep inside what he had to do, and that was why I think he answered his hero's calling. He did something outside his cover zone for something he truly believed in. Basically what he did was that he pounded his fist, stubbed in pollen and said, a voting shall be cast now, either you're for or against slavery. No ifs or buts. He was forcing the issue, which was unheard of during that time. So again, put yourself in his shoes. Not only was he putting his reputation on the line, he was also risking the government positions of his friends too. Because if they showed their hand and showed everyone that they were against slavery and the voting went south, they could lose their seat in parliament. So it was a very risky and brave thing for him to do because he was forcing the issue knowing all the potential risks. During the whole time, people from both sides were telling him to call it off. I'll put a picture here at the parliament floor so you can imagine it better. And even more tempting to just soften the words so people don't have to show their true color when they voted. But during the whole time, he slammed his fist down and said, no, I will not back down, I will not soften the words. This vote will go through because this issue of slavery has to be made known to everyone. It has to be made. And he did, he stood his ground. Regardless of all the pressure he felt in that room during that day, he answered his hero's calling. And from there, you can see that the dies of fate were rolled. Even though the people against slavery lost the vote during that day, a series of events happened. Now the government knew that slavery wasn't an issue that could be waived and motion away. It was at the forefront now. So what Buxton and his friends did was they set up a national petition against slavery. And what they did was they gathered four stacks of paper filled with signatures. It was like a final rally for Thomas Buxton. All his hard work for over a decade was finally coming to fruition and the people of Britain were rising with him to declare that Great Britain did not want slavery anymore. Finally, in 1833, the Parliament finally passed the act that abolished slavery from all of Britain. But unfortunately for our great hero, Thomas Buxton, his life did not end happily. He was ambitious and wanted to end slavery worldwide, so he set up a mission to go to Africa to find a way to end slavery economically. Unfortunately, the mission failed and some of his close friends on the mission died. And what did society do to a man like Thomas Buxton? They laughed and mocked at him, and Thomas Buxton, already sad that his friends died from the mission he set up, fell into depression, and died three years later. So this is real life, and true heroes don't always get the recognition or reward. Sometimes are treated terribly. But what marks a true hero is that they don't do it for the reward. They don't do it for the recognition. They do it because they deeply believe in what they're doing. They do it because they're fighting for some noble cause, something that they know is right for the world, and they refuse to back down no matter what society says, no matter what happens to them, no matter how much they suffer, they'll keep going for it no matter what. And that was what made Thomas Buxton a true hero. Well, I hope that story made you feel some type of way and hope you gave you a experience of what it means to stand up for something you believe in and answer your call to adventure or your hero's calling. To really step outside your comfort zone and fight for something you believe in. And then again, to reiterate, the moment when Thomas Buxton stood up in parliament and slammed his fist down and said, yay or nay for slavery, that was him answering his hero's call. He stood up for something he believed in and pushed himself and stood outside his comfort zone and withstood all that pressure from everyone because he knew he had to do something to get his vision across, the vision of freeing all slaves of Britain. So, I want you to contemplate this question. This question I post right here. What is something that you deeply value and want to give to the world? Think about it. It has to be very personal. It doesn't have to be freeing slaves. It doesn't have to be helping people in third world countries. It could be anything that you, the most important thing is you, find personally valuable. Dream big and honestly, but don't just think about it. Feel what your heart tells you the world needs more of. Maybe you feel that the world needs more businesses that can provide great insights to clients through data. Or it could be that you feel that the world needs more pictures to capture the beauty of life. Or you feel that the world needs better cooks to give delicious food for people to eat. Or you want to open a bar so people have a great time. Or like me, you want people to be more passionate and empowered in life. Once you ground yourself in that feeling that tells you what you truly value, start looking for opportunities to answer the hero's call and step outside your comfort zone so you can give the world what you truly value. I hope this helped and helped you understand this important concept called the hero's calling or the call to adventure. Uh, quick update on my physique competition. 
the gains are coming. My strength is going up in the gym, which is nice. I might do a update video of me working out in the gym because anytime I really push myself and go through a set, I feel like I'm answering my hero's call because I'm pushing myself to go past my comfort zone and do it. Not just for myself, but for you guys so I can bring the best package I can and help motivate you guys to become the best that you guys can be. So, maybe I'll do a video about that in the future. Until then, I'll put links at the end of the video to help you guide to more resources that will help you really ground this idea of a hero's call in your own life. And yeah, hope this video helps. Until then, peace. I love you guys. Take care.